so I thought I'd share how I make the diamond grid uh, floor with everyone since that seemed to be something that a lot of people reacted to and wanted to know how to do. Um, so the materials you want to make sure you have on hand are scotch tape just so you can tape your grid to the foam board, exacto knife so you can cut out the shape you need. Um, I use a ballpoint pen for both marking and sort of cutting into the foam board itself. And then you want to make sure you have a nice ruler that has a good straight edge. And I like this clear one because I can see through it in terms of what's going on underneath as I work along. Um, and then at the end of this video's uh, website, you're going to find a link to where you can get these lovely little grids. Um, it's a free online location where you can plug in the size you want uh, down to the width of the lines to the spacing of the squares, and then you have your own personalized grid that just downloads as a PDF. Um, so make sure you check for that link at the bottom once you're done watching this video. So really how it works out for me is I'll have the floor sort of determined size-wise what I want to do for the project. Then I'll just take the tape and just tape it onto the foam board itself. And obviously you have your paper on top still just to keep the foam board protected. Um, and then what I do to mark everything, and it's ridiculously easy, take your ballpoint pen and then you literally just go through and you poke holes where the corners meet. And you want to hear a popping sound so that you know you're getting through that first layer and into your foam board. Uh, reason being that when you peel away that first layer of paper, you'll be able to see what's going on underneath and have sort of like this dot grid set up for you. Um, so I'm just gonna do a few lines here and as you can see, you literally just wanna poke it through, hear that pop, and that way you know you have your mark where you want it. Uh, when it comes to points like you're working up to the very edge, you wanna make sure that you mark those corner points and it also comes in really handy to have those dots on the edge so that you can see how far it goes for you. I tend to just do this up and down technique, if you want to call it that, um, just to make sure I'm getting all the dots as I go along. And again, you just want to make sure you do that little poke at the corner so that you see where your edge line is being created. Um, you know, depending on the size you want to do this, the nice thing is, is because you have this piece of paper, you can lift it up and move it and then shift it over to where you want to pick back up with the pattern. And that way you have this nice, long, uniform, floor or wall or whatever it is you decide that you want to make and it's a pretty much no fuss no muss type of thing so I'm just gonna wrap this part up by going across here I'm not going to do the whole sheet just for the sake of time but yeah you basically work across make sure you have all your dots done and then what I'll do is I just lift up peel away the grid itself it stays in pretty good shape um, I've only had to print out two of these so far and I'm still using both um, so just keep that for safekeeping, but as you can see now on the paper you have all these fun little dots and these are the dots that you're going to use to start measuring off your lines. Um, so next step is to, I honestly just prefer to cut out my form from the foam board. So working with the dots, I don't even bother pulling out a pen or anything because the dots are pretty clear. I'll take the X-Acto knife and then just line up the ruler helps to have a better edge and then literally just run the exacto across nice and carefully and you get it to go all the way through to pop off one side and then you'll do the same on the other line it up again and run the exacto across Finish that off, and then this way, next step is you just peel off that top piece of paper, and you're going to find your dots have transferred through that first layer, and you have the ability to work with them on the foam board itself. All right, so again. 
Hopefully you can see that. There are these dots that are just running all across the foam board and what you're going to work with. Um, so because it's diagonal pattern, I tend to set it on the bias, just offset a little bit. And then what you're going to want to make sure you're doing is getting your ruler lined up on your first row of dots. And then you will take your ballpoint pen and you're going to run it across. Let me switch hands here. You're going to run it across. Make sure you're holding your ruler down nice and firm. And just gently glide that ballpoint across. And you'll get that nice first dark line going because it's the darker colored black ballpoint pen. Um, I personally like to go across about two or three times just to get that nice deep groove set in. Um, and because it's a black ballpoint pen, what I find happens is you don't have to worry about as much with your black wash getting deep into those grooves. Uh, it just sort of happens that the black pen's ink translates nicely so you can see your grid a lot better and a lot more clearly. So what I do is I just keep marching down, lining up my ruler against the dots, and then working across. You just want to make sure you have a good firm grip on your ruler so that it stays steady. Um, make that first line across nice and even and slowly. If you rush it, it might push your ruler down a little bit so your lines are going to get a little wonky. But you really just keep going all the way down so that after a while you'll see you have these nice lines marking off the sides of your tile. Um, then when it comes time, you basically would rotate your work again on a bias, but this way you're working on the other set of dots. So same thing as before, line up your ruler to those dots and then just carefully roll it across. And it's really going to be your preference. Uh, you can use an X-Acto knife. You can use a pen knife for this if you want to. Reason why I like using the ballpoint is because you get that nice, almost jagged look to the tiles. Uh, so it has that more aged, uh, antiqued look to the tiles, not that nice clean line that you'll get off of, you know, modern day porcelain tiles. But as you go along, you'll see that your diamond shaped tiles start to form. And it's literally just from going across and doing the lines with the ballpoint pen and the ruler. Um, so this is obviously just a smaller piece, more for a sample. But as you go along, you'll start getting this really nice, sharp diamond shaped pattern. And again, if it's something where you want to work from a larger piece and make sure the grid carries through, you literally just take your paper and all those little dots that you just made, line up the edge to your last dot made, and then you can just keep working across on the pattern itself to get a larger space figured out. I do recommend you figure out your center point and work out from that rather than going edge to edge, um, only because you do tend to lose the evenness of the pattern if you do it that way. But other than that, that's really how I make this diamond grid for the floor that you saw in the temple and the fountain room. And it's something that can easily be applied to other scapes and areas of your adventures. So hope that clears this up for everyone and good luck with it. I can't wait to see what other people do with it. And thanks for watching.